Christianity today is is being marginalized and we're being discriminated unjustly and 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 I don't, I don't think that's right at all. Now, Reverend Lynn, first of all, I want to know, uh, can you bring our viewers back to the uh, day in which you were arrested? What were you doing? What were you saying? Yes, it was yesterday at around 4 o'clock um, in the afternoon. It wasn't beyond uh, uh, the, you know, the closing of uh, in the night. And uh, we basically went there. We started off with a prayer, uh, the, the, the Lord's Prayer, three times. We had a, a homeless gentleman that... Um, enjoys and he also uh, is a member of the LGBT community he he uh, enjoyed our ministry and he sang a song on our microphone and, uh, and once he finished I started to say God loves you God cares for every person here he's calling everyone to himself and I repeated over and over how God loves you I accept you I tolerate you and um, I hope you tolerate me but immediately even while we were praying before that they were already setting up signs in front of us before we even spoke. And Sorry, when you say they, who would those uh, people uh, be, sir? I'm assuming, and I'm assuming members of the LGBT community, before we even spoke publicly, they already had signs of hatred towards our group. And I don't know these people. Um, our, our church hasn't, uh, as far as I even recall, been there before. So... Um, um, and Reverend Lind, if I can ask, the um, I, I guess the the nut, the crux of the matter is, at any time during your prayer session, in your remarks, did you ever say anything uh, derogatory, hateful? Did you ever uh, call for violence towards members, anything like that? Absolutely, no, absolutely not. Uh, I don't promote violence in any form, fashion, and I only spoke love um, to them. I've never incited any anger. There's nothing I said that should have incited any anger. I never spoke ill against their community. I never said anything directly. All I said was God loves you, God accepts you. It's all on public record on live stream media. Um, in fact, it's the other way around. They actually physically assaulted me. They actually said hateful things towards me. I'm, I, I'm not welcome, get out of here. Every form of hateful thing that you could imagine under the sun. Not me though. And, it, and it's all on public record for the world to see. Now, I imagine, Reverend, there's a lot of people watching this right now, hearing your marks, and they're gobsmacked at the idea that in Toronto in 2019, you are being prevented from preaching the gospel. I'm very hurt by that because it, it, it makes me feel that being a Christian is, is, is a second-class citizen, and I, and I don't know what to do now. I, I'm afraid. I... I uh, I'm psychologically traumatized by this. Uh, I don't know how to be a Christian or even be a person anymore. Um, it, it's making me feel that the laws are not equal. They, they, don't, they don't support me as a person. I, I can't be me in Toronto. And I didn't incite violence to anybody. I didn't... I, I don't I, 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 I don't even feel like I'm a person and I'm a Canadian citizen a sixth generation Canadian I have a I have no criminal record like what, never, is, what am I supposed to do like what is any Christian supposed to do am I supposed to, to hide and fear uh, that I might lose my job or fear that if I express myself I'm gonna be arrested like that's how I feel Reverend, if we can drill down on something you just said, that the laws are not being applied equally. Um, hypothetical question, if you were, say, a Muslim imam um, out on the public square where you were that day, do you think you would have encountered the reaction you did? You know, I, I'm not a Muslim and I disagree with Islamic theology, but I, I do see that there's a uh, 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 almost that if someone was Muslim or a member of the LGBT community, either one, that they would have preference with the legal system over me. And I do believe if, and, and some Muslims have said things like that in the past. In fact, they carry a lot of books that explain their beliefs and, 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 and nothing happens to them. And, and I, I don't know why all, all the target is against Christians. I don't know why they get away with things and we can't. And I'm, I'm all for freedom of speech. And I, and I think 
that it should be applied equally across the board. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, on Saturday, we were covering the Al-Quds rally. Uh, there is a video that is on our website. It's been there for almost 48 hours. I personally interviewed a Muslim at the Al-Quds protest who was advocating very pridefully the execution of gays. His dream is that Canada will be under Sharia law, and this is what he said. And I don't see any kind of, um, I guess, media snowball, the likes of which we saw here, and yet what he said is exponentially worse than anything you said. I mean, you didn't even um, make a derogatory remark, and here is this person at Al-Quds actually advocating for the execution of people based on their sexual orientation. What do you make of that? Well, was he arrested? Absolutely not. Well, that's horrible. I, I mean, I think if anybody's threatening somebody's life, they should be arrested. And I wasn't threatening anybody's life. I, I was telling the, the total opposite. God loves you. And why was I arrested? Why was my rights infringed upon? Why am I, why is my freedoms being restricted? And I didn't make any threats, and I never make any threats, never. I might disagree with certain theological or worldview points, but I never make any threats to anybody's life because that's contrary to my faith. But if someone did, according to the law, that that's illegal. Someone should be arrested for that. And that's sad like that someone could make comments like that and not get arrested. And here I am, you know... I'm here getting arrested and ostracized and marginalized, and now I can't even express myself. Well, for what? For, for standing up at church in Wellesley, telling them that God loves them, I accept them, and I tolerate them, and, and being assaulted back, and, and I'm the guy that goes to jail? Well, not only not arrested, uh, Reverend, but uh, this group, was, which did not have a permit to be on city property, was not charged and was, in fact, given a police escort to march around the city, shutting down thoroughfares. So it, it, it's baffling that way. I'm curious, do you think the unspoken strategy of the police might be that in light of the way the Bruce MacArthur serial killer investigation uh, was allegedly bungled, that there is now this over uh, correction when it comes to any policing matters in the gay community yeah hundred percent I, I I think people have gone to the extreme and and, and it's true atrocities have happened uh, towards the gay community and which are unfortunate and so forth you know but but uh, if but but going overboard and 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 now marginalizing other groups that's not the answer what what is the answer is that we should apply the law equally and when people abuse the law they should be subject to the law um so yeah what's happening today it, this was a bad this was a bad precedence i you know, I, I, I'm hoping that that through this whole thing, not only they would apologize, but there would be some legal precedent set for Christians too. I I hope that the banks would start putting up a cross, just like they do the rainbow flag. I hope that Justin Trudeau would start. I I, I think there should be a Christian month now. I, I'm starting because it, this is just not fair. I, I don't. I'm a. I, uh, Toronto's a religious city. Uh, there's churches on almost every block, and the Bible's not a banned book. So why are we being subject to this this inhumane treatment? I, it, and I would imagine there are gay people who are Christians too, right? Well, there's a lot of gay people and other people that have all sorts of religious perspectives, and I can't speak on those. But one thing I know is that Christianity today is is being marginalized, and we're being discriminated unjustly. And 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 I don't I don't think that's right at all. Reverend, if I can ask you, um, a lot of people will probably be saying, well, what is the Reverend's unspoken strategy here um, in that, um, and don't get me wrong, I believe in being able to practice free speech and free expression in any public square, but I guess a contrarian might say, why is he going right into the heart of the Toronto gay community? Why, why doesn't he go uh, somewhere where it is, I guess, less in their face to people that might be yeah. potentially offended by your message. Can you give us um, a, an explanation why you chose that particular corner? Well, I didn't choose that particular corner to target uh, the LGBT community only. I chose that corner because we're going, we have a Toronto tour and we're going all throughout Toronto in every 22, all the 22 districts of Toronto. Um, but if we start saying, you know what, 
Um, and just on a, another point, if we start saying it's wrong for someone to evangelize any community, whether it's the, the, the Bay Street, uh, the rich guys, the, 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 the poor community, the, the homeless at Sherborne and Queen, if we start saying, you know what, it's wrong to bring the gospel to any community, then, I'll, then, then there'll never be any evangelistic efforts or any missionary efforts at all. I have no problem with sharing the gospel to the LGBT community as to everyone because I believe that the LGBT community has an opportunity to receive the grace of God and the forgiveness of God just like the homeless community and the rich and the poor and the blacks and the whites. Everyone is worthy of the gospel and so I want to see, and I'll make that very clear, I want to see members of the LGBT community know and find Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and receive His forgiveness and His love and His grace, just like every other community in this city. And you know, Reverend, just yesterday I was in Ottawa covering the Standing Committee on uh, Justice and Human Rights. Namely, it's about bringing back Section 13, which the Harper Conservatives repealed uh, some six years ago. This is the pro-censorship, uh, anti, so-called anti-hate speech law, basically where someone could haul you in front of a human rights uh, commission for having hurt feelings. Um, first of all, I want to get your um, uh, opinion on how you feel about Section 13 being resurrected uh, if the if this committee has its way. And secondly, it might be a, a moot point given that, forget about human rights legislation, it looks like you're already being persecuted by the real police and the real courts. Uh, to have true diversity means that you need to be tolerant of all opinions um, if it's truly diversity. This uh, Bill C-13 is actually restricting um, freedom of speech and restricting and marginalizing certain groups in favor of others. That's not diversity, that's not equality, that's not freedom. That sounds like socialist communism of, of some sort or some kind of dictatorship. And I'm not for it at all. I, 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 I think it's a sad day that anyone would try to, try to, try to push uh, an agenda that says, well, we believe in diversity, just not for Christians. And that's what's happening. I don't agree with it. I think that if you're going to uh, hand out free Korans, which talk uh, against Christianity and against the essential message of Jesus Christ, that he's the son of God and he died on the cross, if that's allowed, then sharing the Bible and opinions about Islam should also be allowed. Um, and the Bible disagrees with the Koran, the Koran disagrees with the Bible. Okay, well, if, if it's true freedom, then both should be allowed. But don't say the Bible's not allowed, but the Koran is. And again, it's same with the LGBT community. If they want to be a part of this diverse society, then they should also be, uh, sh all should, also should know that people won't agree with them. And that's the whole point of having a democracy, is that people can disagree and still live in the same place in peace. When things get violent, that's a, that's a different story. And Jesus said, whoever lives by the sword will die by the sword. He wasn't a violent man. But in the Quran, over 109 verses speak about fighting in the name of their religion. Now, I don't know why that's not a banned book or why people aren't setting laws to restrict Islam, but that's a, a whole nother story. But Christians are, are the good guys here. Who are the guys telling people they can be forgiven, that God loves the world? And, you know, what is it about our message that's so hateful? I don't know. Just because we have perspectives on things, look, that doesn't make us the bad guys. Everybody has perspectives on things. And just like what happened yesterday, people's perspectives became hateful and they became, uh, they, they used assault against me and nothing was done. I didn't use assault, I didn't use hate speech. And yet I... An assault is a crime crime. It's not a thought crime, a so-called hate crime, right? Also, Reverend, can you tell me, do you find it disturbing that um, I agree with your position that we should have diversity of thought in a democracy, but it seems that in Canada and other Western democracies, we're getting more and more away from free speech and more towards state-approved speech, and also by extension with the social media giants in Silicon Valley. Um, they can also, and they're doing it with increasing frequency, deplatforming those people whose opinions they merely do not like. Is this a disturbing trend for you? We're living in the last days, uh, you know. <laughs> I mean, these are the days where Jesus foretold that They'll think that killing Christians, restricting Christians, imprisoning Christians is doing God a favor. 
you can't have freedom without allowing people to share their opinions. And so what's going on in Silicon Valley with Facebook and YouTube, even Justin Trudeau talking about working with these social media giants to restrict freedom of speech, that should be a clear uh, indicator or be brought to everybody's attention that he's acting like a dictator. That's what dictators do. Uh, and I don't know why he's doing that. I don't know if he's... Uh, secretly parlaying with some uh, terrorist groups or some kind of group out there that's supporting some kind of whatever a general just to keep him power. I don't know what it is, but it's unjust and it's, un it's not right. And we have to stand up now before it's too late. Christians and all those who believe in freedom of speech should be standing up and filling the street corners and going to these places and, and, and exercising their, their rights as Canadians before it's too late. We need to make a voice and we need to stand against this, this tyranny and this dictatorship that's happening. And, I, and I, it's sad to me because this means that for my children that are growing up here, they may not be allowed to be Christians. And, and for all the other people who want to practice, whether they're Jewish or whatever, they may not allow, be allowed to practice their faith. And, and this, this, is, this is, it's horrible, it's horrible. And Reverend, if I can ask you, do you think you're getting um, fair treatment from the mainstream media, many of whom are in line for a Justin Trudeau media bailout of $600 million? We, we know the CBC already gets over $1.5 billion a year. Um, so basically there's a, I think a carrot and stick approach going on with how this government is treating the media. Um, you're, what you're saying, for whatever reason, doesn't seem to be state-approved speech. Um, but by proxy, do you think the mainstream media outlets are um, not giving you uh, fair treatment in the coverage of your plight? Yeah, no, they're not. Um, the police aren't giving me fair uh, e equality, but definitely the media. And I, I can see how they're just trying to spin it to one agenda and make it look like I'm hateful towards the LGBT community when I'm not. Um, again, I, I, I just want to see everybody come to the Lord Jesus Christ, everybody. Um, and so, yeah, I do see a media bias and I do see that you know, a lot of the things that are going on, the assaults against Christians, just about two days, uh, the same day actually, um, an assault took place with me with another um, uh, person in, a, in the Kensington Market community. The police stood around and didn't do anything. Uh, two days ago... You mean there were police there that there witnessed three, this? Three, three people, the, the suspects were right there, and they didn't go chase them. They got away. Two days ago, we had a busker ass assault me. Phys it's all on camera for the world to see. I asked somebody to call the police about an hour and a half. It took about an hour and a half for them to show up. And then when they did show up, first of all, there was no cameras. There was no nothing. To, no, nobody seemed to care. And when they did show up, they were trying to even say, well, you know, do you even want to press charge? And I was like, okay, well, then you have to go in the back of the cruiser. And, you know, I was recording for my own safety. And then they didn't even want to pursue. They're like, well, I'm not going to pursue it then just because I wanted to. Now, I don't know the laws in regards to that, but, but I feel that, it, over and over, Christians are being assaulted in Toronto and marginalized, and nobody's speaking about it. I know you guys are doing the best you can, but uh, but other mainstream sources, CTV and all the other, they're not talking about this. And, and we are the persecuted minority. Christians all around the world, uh, even what happened in Sri Lanka, like it wasn't properly publicized. But New Zealand, I mean, 40 people versus 300 people. I mean... I don't think anybody should be murdered. And it was right that they publicized the deaths of those who died in the mosque. But why was it not equally publicized in the media regarding Sri Lanka? 300 Christians died. And why did no major Islamic source stand in solidarity with these Christians who were killed? Like us Christians, we stood in solidarity with them. Many people were wearing hijabs saying, you know what, we stand with you. It was wrong. But nobody did that for the Christians. And so this is a sign that the media seems to have an agenda against Christians for some weird reason. And, and it's so obvious, it's blatantly obvious, and I, and I hope that people start to see it, especially through something like this. And I guess certainly you are personally experiencing this double standard, this hypocrisy uh, yourself, Reverend. Tell me, after you were arrested, what happened? Uh, were you taken to, uh, to, to, to jail? Were you not, were you not re released uh, automatically? Or? Yeah, I was, I was taken. The first thing was taken was my cell phone. They took it separately from everything else. I have no clue what they did with my cell phone. 
Um, they didn't allow me to call my wife and my, my son, who's uh, in, a, in a very vulnerable situation. Uh, until now, I, nobody allowed me to call my wife or my son, the, the, the guard. I don't know if he was a member of the LGBT community. I don't know what he had against me because I, did, I treated him with full respect. But he totally ignored me for the entire night, and that's about eight hours. I kept knocking. He walked. He's right there. He won't. He wouldn't answer. He even shut the the thing that you could see just so that I don't know what he was trying to do. But I know the sergeant, one of the main sergeants that took me in at the uh, church in Wellesley, was wearing uh, uh, an LGBTQI. Um, uh, uh, kind of a stick badge on his uniform and he was the main guy responsible for my arrest and um, and I went to 51 division which covers the the LGBTQI area so I don't know what was going on but I know many of the members in that uh, jail had those those uh, LGBTQI stickers on their uniforms and, you know, if I can just interject here, Reverend, I mean, I, I find that fascinating in the fact that uh, a uniform is supposed to be unblemished with uh, any kind of um, uh, paraphernalia. I mean, the very idea of a uniform is that there's uniformity. I wonder uh, if a police officer were to put, I don't know, a, uh, a, a cross or a badge with Donald Trump's uh, picture on it, y you name it. But you were saying that the police were wearing the, uh, the, the rainbow flag insignia. Not all of them, but uh, many of them. And I, I agree with you, if that's kosher, if that's okay, then someone should technically be allowed to put a cross and say that they're standing in sol solidarity with the Christian community too, or any other community, if that's what's going to be allowed. And, and if that's what the, the Toronto Police uh, Services Board is allowing, then let it be fair across the board. But if it's only singling out and and highlighting and giving special rights to one community, that's unjust, and I think it should be challenged by the law. But the point is, you were indeed incarcerated, and I'd like to do another contrast here. Just three weeks ago in Richmond Hill, um, there were two, a father and son uh, that were arrested uh, for allegedly having an explosive device and detonator, and um, they were uh, immediately released on bail. This is for a potential uh, weapon of destruction um, that they might have uh, been planning to use and yet you preach the gospel and you're incarcerated overnight. I mean I, I'm just trying to get it straight in my head uh, the priorities here. I'm trying to get it straight in my head too. Like I'm not a criminal. I've, I've never had a violent past. I, I don't carry firearms. Um, I have no previous criminal record, so, uh, and I definitely didn't have det detonators or explosive materials, so I, I really don't understand why this even happened, and it, and it, and it's very hurtful to to sit into that cell all night, and and I had no blankets, no pillow. It was very cold. It's almost like, I don't know if they turned up the air conditioner extra high in my cell purposely and on top of it they wouldn't even answer me at all and this is all on video I, I, I want those videos to be released because you can clearly see me knocking and the guy walking by and he refuses to answer me you can see me making signs in the video saying I need to call my wife because I have a three-year-old son and she's in a vulnerable place in a third world country right now and nobody allowed me to even call her uh, and that's my first priority after this interview is to call my wife and, and make sure she's okay because she's in a very vulnerable situation. I, I don't know why my rights were infringed. I don't know what I did to deserve this kind of treatment. I, I, I'm not a criminal. I'm not a terrorist. I don't even know why certain boundary restrictions are given to me. I didn't go to a specific event. Um, I'm not guilty before, it, uh, you know, I'm not even guilty. Uh, the trial hasn't even happened. Fine, you, you don't want me to go to church in Wellesley, but what does that have to do with the rest of the boundaries? And what does that have to do with the LGBTQI pride, pride event or pride events? Listen to me, this wasn't even an event. And our church just has no, no pri uh, prior history going there and, and having any charge against us at that place. And so... Um, now my, my, my rights are being infringed now because now if I set up at Young and Dundas and it just, just happens to be a, a dyke march or, a, or people driving around on a, on a, a naked on, on, the, on the bicycles like they do every single year, I'm going to be in violation of my bail. 
simply because I'm exercising my freedom of speech and I'm there at Young and Dundas every single day. So this is not fair at all. Like, I mean, you know, I, I could totally understand if I incited violence or I had detonators and I had a plan to blow up the LGBT. Okay, I, I could totally understand that. But this is a man without any prior conviction, with any criminal record, with no hate speech on record. I made no hate speech. I only said God loves you. And now my job as a pastor and as a street preacher is being infringed upon. And, and I can't even do it properly. Now I have to be paranoid about where I go. Um, and, 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 you know, so it, this is... And, 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 you know, you do raise another p a good point in terms of the double standard dichotomy, Reverend, that um, in the uh, the Pride Parade, you do see people without any clothing. That That is a public indecency charge. I mean, that that is, you know, which uh, the police turn a blind eye. This Saturday, there will be the annual naked bike ride, again, full nudity. And, um, again, uh, rather than charging people, the police will be escorting them. So, again, it just speaks to um, the way... I I guess the police and whoever's ordering the police are cherry picking who they're going to charge and what for because it seems that a lot of people are getting away with real crimes and they're throwing the book at you for a thought crime in their eyes yeah i don't know any of the uh, you know the events uh, you know all i know is i set up and do my thing like i can't control what people want to start doing and saying this is an event is like and it's wrong like nobody should be bicycling around naked and uh, and that's obscenity as I think it's still a law that, that you know it's illegal and why do they get away with it I wouldn't get away with it you know I couldn't just walk around the mall or walk around public naked and you know so I don't know what's going on but it's not right it's not right at all and I and I'm upset I'm, I'm really upset that this is even happening and that at the, the, yeah, this is this is wrong, and, and something needs to be done, and something has to be done. It, well, yeah, Reverend. On that note, um, and you've been very generous with your time. I thank you sincerely. Um, moving forward, um, can you tell me how this is going to play out? You're you're going to be fighting these charges. Are you um, uh, considering lawyering up to uh, do a civil suit regarding the yes. way in which you've yes. been treated? I, I'm a little. I'm uh, over the last. What I've started to see this over the years. I, I, I'm now ready to start taking legal action against the assaults, just the discrimination, as a precedence for the rest of the Christian community. I, I, I think it's about time that uh, you know um, certain organizations that are pushing this, um, even our government, has to hold, be accountable for what they're doing. And I and I and I am ready to press charges for what they've done to me for 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 putting my name out there in a negative light, for subjecting me to inhumane treatment, um, for not handling any of the assault, three assault cases within three days that were, were left untouched, um, and all the other cases and the things that are happening in the Christian community. I am ready to, 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 to do a counter suit, and I, and I definitely am gonna appeal this, these bail conditions. I am definitely gonna fight this. And um, I think it's about time that the Christian community and everybody that, that feels that Canada is being, is being changed from what it should be, um, it's time that we all stand together and stand up against this tyranny and this dictatorship and these unjust laws because these, this, is, this is simply, it's simply an agenda to, to marginalize Christians. I, and, and that has to stop today. Well, there you have it, folks. Um, a whole lot of this story doesn't make sense. It, there is so much hypocrisy, so many double standards at play. But rest assured, we are going to follow this case. And unlike the mainstream media, we are not going to bring you the state-approved narrative. We're going to attempt to get the truth and ask the questions that other people aren't asking. For the Rebel.media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, the Rebel has a new app. Please download that app and take the Rebel with you wherever you go.